So it's the end of August here in Gettysburg at the Back to Eden Garden, and we just pulled in to uh, do some harvesting and filming, and Natasha showed up, and she pulled in right behind us. Uh, she's been here before to tour the garden, her and her, her family, and uh, people just stop in quite often that have been here before, stop in to see how things are doing, and, and she's one of the ones that have, has done that. So uh, we're kind of going through the garden with her today and uh, taking a look at these beets. Now, a lot of people come and they see the beets and they go, oh my gosh, those beets are huge. But are they tough and woody? They're really not. Uh, part of the reason is I have two types of beets here. There is a, a, a type called Deacon Dan and they grow quite large. I mean, a beet this size for Deacon Dan. But these guys, they're not the Deacon Dans, they're the regular beets. And uh, we've not found them to be woody. So we'll pull a couple out. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're they're not little like what you get like what you get at the store. <laughs> but uh, do you want the greens on or off? You can leave them on. Okay. Just pull off some of the browns. I'll pull the browns off. Right. But yeah, here's the. Uh, wow, thank you. Here's here's the beets, and the cool thing about growing beets in the back to Eden gardening method is this: is that when I plant the seeds, I really don't worry about how close the seeds are to one another. Because, as you can see, the beets really make room for themselves. They push each other around. I mean, right here, you, you've got like two layers of beets. They're all compacted in there, but they're, they're great. They're fine. They don't mind it at all. And uh, we'll get those eaten up. Oh, there's a big one. <laughs> Is that a deacon? Yeah, I don't think so. Those were over there, <laughs> the, the deacon. Deacon Dan, or whatever they're called. Yeah. You. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. My mom's being jealous. She always makes beets and puts them in her salad. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> but you, you can you can often tell by they dry up here. Oh, okay. And but the, these are called the tendrils, like these little shoots here. They're not really leaves, but these tendrils dry up like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And cantaloupe are like, they're like um, uh, really actually the easiest to tell because they change color. They look like the color they're supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. Now these bigger guys don't fall off the vine as easily as the smaller ones do. But um, yeah, these, this one's, this one's like ready. Is that, yeah. can you smell it? Oh yeah, it smells it's like cantaloupe. Smell yeah, it smells like candy too, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I feel the, right. These guys are, um, they're all dying back. Of course, it's, it's just the time for them to die back, but these still have some growth in them. And on this tower, when they're ripe, you'll find them on the ground. Hmm. And when they're too ripe, you'll find them okay. rotted on the back ground. Back to earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I missed that one. Um, we were away for a few days and I guess that, that came ripe and dropped. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I, I like to wait until a cantaloupe, when you touch it, whether it's on the ground or here, you touch it and it just comes off in your hand. Okay. Then it's, it's ripe and it's sweet and it's good. Okay. And the honeydew, these guys, uh, these guys over here, the honeydew will turn from green to like the yellowish. Mm -hmm. And then what they'll do is they'll get they'll get soft. It's the same thing with the tendrils. The tendrils will dry up. And you can see the, they're changing the color. And they'll get a little bit soft on this back end. Do they smell like the cantaloupe? Not so much. Nice. Yeah, the, the honeydew are a little bit harder to tell when they're ripe. But, mm. um, I, I believe there's a lot of these guys that are ripe. And the watermelons, I mean, look at the size of that watermelon. I mean, last year, we had a 50 pound watermelon. Watermelons, they'll do the same thing. They, the tendrils dry up. Now this whole vine is drying up. But when you turn them over, See, that usually says that it's not ripe if it's white on the bottom. They'll, they'll go from white to yellow. And uh, the, the first year or two that I grew watermelons, I cut so many open that weren't ripe. Oh, 
how discouraging. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to have to check on some of these just to see how they're doing. I think that guy has to be has to be right. It's I think been, like knocking on it like a series. That doesn't no. Because early on it sounds hollow. But yeah, it's, not, not, it's not effective. Uh, and I know a lot of times people will go to the grocery store and you'll knock on the watermelons to see, you know, to, if it sounds hollow, then it's ready. But yeah. that's, that's not really the case. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, let's see what the bottom of this one looks like. Do they have a county fair you can enter it into? I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Roll it down the road. I mean, that's that's looking yellow. So, you know, I'm I'm thinking that this guy's ripe. But I actually would like to open up a smaller one first before before opening this one up, just in case it's not. Hmm. But my goodness. Well, I just broke the vine, so. Bringing in the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's heavy. That thing is heavy. I mean, I, I'd, I'd say here, oh, yeah, hold I'm it, like, but I you don't need to do that. <laughs> That's heavy. I would like to open it up, though. Oh, gosh. You could eat off that for two weeks. <laughs> I took how tiny that knife looks compared to the watermelon. Oh, dear. It's starting to split open on its own, which is a good sign. Right, it smells it. It smells good. We we'll mm. take right from the very best of the best of the melon here. Yeah, and the seeds are already starting to germinate, ready to make new watermelon. Yeah, they're connecting there, aren't they? They're good. Cool. Thank you. Mm. Watery, sweet. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> That's a little bit. It could have been thick last week. Yes. Well, yay, at least it's ripe. Mm -hmm. Now we've got some watermelon to, to harvest. These are lima beans, and they're supposed to be bush beans. Uh, bush beans usually take up about this much width. Those are about three or four times that. Uh, I don't think... I think they made a mistake in the packaging because that doesn't, <laughs> that looks like a horizontal bush, not, not, a, not a regular bush. In other words, I think those are pole beans, but uh, they're, they're doing quite well. And I know those are pole beans because the package said so. But uh, this was our, and the squash is really dying back now, the plants are. They got hit real hard this year with uh, with the vine boring worms, but um, I grew them up this this concrete remesh to kind of get some up off the ground, and they did quite well. It doesn't look like it now because everything's dying back as it's supposed to, but uh, we particularly like butternut squash. This guy's good and right. There you go. So it's just, you can tell it's orange. And... Yeah, with the, the, the darker the, the skin, the more ripe that it is. And uh, if you look at this one, this one's obviously not ripe. It's, it's uh, still in very much growing. Hasn't even reached full growth. But here's one that is, uh, that's getting its full growth, but it just hasn't ripened. And then you have these guys that, like I say, I really like to leave them on the vine until uh, until things start to freeze. I I could be wrong, but I think that they they get riper. How long can these save for, like on the shelf? All winter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's we have why some from last season. Yeah. And I I'm like, should we cut them open? <laughs> Probably should see if they're still good or not. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cause they seem really like hardy. Well, that's why they're called winter squash is because they'll, they'll store through the winter. Mm -hmm. And we cut 
some uh, spaghetti squash open one spring, and that's a winter squash as well. And uh, there were sprouts on the inside. Uh, we didn't use the sprouts. We just we could have, but we just got rid of it. So. The tomatoes this year, the vegetation has been outrageous, and there, there's a good amount of tomatoes coming on. But the green, I just have not been able to keep up with and keep the, the plants trimmed back at all. And uh, actually on the, the sweet potatoes, neither the deer or the rabbits here outside the fence have really done a number on these, but they eat all the leaves off. But in a couple of days, those leaves will be right back again. And they'll, they'll look just like the ones over here. I don't know if these lima beans are ready to go yet, but we'll find out. Looks like it. Here, try that one. <laughs> That's pretty good size. <laughs> Looks like lima bean. Smells like lima bean. <laughs> Tastes like lima bean. Must be lima bean. <laughs> it's good. So, Natasha, how did you end up here today? Well, it's... um. Saturday, my husband's at home, and um, I told them my youngest is napping and Heidi's content, so I'm gonna take a couple hours and just go, just go and see where God leads me. And mm -hmm. this is the the first stop, about 10 minutes from my house. And uh, actually, a couple weeks ago, I did similar to this, and I was very much like, God, okay, tell me where to go. And He told me to come in here, but I was going too fast, and so I was like, okay, I'll come on the way back. And then I didn't. So anyways, but then today, I'm like, I'm gonna go with that initial prompting I had weeks ago. And then you were here and then you showed up, um, like right as I was pulling in as well. And um, yeah, so that's kind of- Well, great. It worked out just tremendous. And yeah. your family, if I remember, I thought I remembered your, your husband and two kids. Yep, I got my husband, Zach, and then Heidi is my three-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. Heidi Genesis, she's our- our beginning mm -hmm. <laughs> child and then uh, Solomon Kai is our son and then I have a I'm expecting a little girl oh in January I'll practice holding this it's probably like <laughs> similar size you know they do that like gauging <laughs> well, maybe not, but... mm. yeah. yeah wonderful so are, you've got a garden at home yeah I came across the documentary not 10 years seven, six, five, maybe five years ago. I was living in Hawaii and a friend came to me. I was living on a farm because years ago I got baptized and God gave me the dream of being a wife, a mother and have a farm. And that was so hmm. random for me because I grew up singing, dancing, acting and nothing to do with gardening. And uh, anyways, years later, my mom got this two acres land leased in Hawaii. And she said, come home after college. And so I came home and attempted to farm. <laughs> So me and her put our little boots on and we were out toiling, you know, I had a, somebody give us a tiller and I'm out there trying to do it and um, my friend comes over one day and he said, I saw this Back to Eden documentary, you have to watch it. So I watched it and I was, I was sold, hook, light and sinker, let's do this. And so in Hawaii, everything grows really abundantly. So there's tons and tons of wood chips and people will almost pay you to take them from them. Nice. <laughs> and uh, so anyways, people just load after load and covered the two acres in wood chips and I started to see like wow this is amazing and flash forward I ended up getting married and then we moved back to where his family is and we just moved 10 minutes from here and we got a wood chip load and yeah we've been doing this pretty much all summer we moved in in May so we put the wood chips down and we have tomatoes and all kinds of things growing. Tremendous. Great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm so glad you're here today. It really, it really added a lot. And it's good to see, it's good to see the people that have been here and have, have uh, taken up using this method and finding it su successful for them. And I'm delighted to see your family is growing. That's a, that's a real blessing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Be blessed with that. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you guys for inspiring me years ago. I feel like I'm so honored to meet you and mm. God, you know, raises up the humble and I just, I feel like you guys have taken the humble stance and you've just been showing this to the world and even continuing to show videos. I watch all, all of Paul's videos back in Washington that people come to his garden and tour. I seen your video, I think 
that you put out last month mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. a while ago. I've seen your, your home tour video, so I'm just honored to be here. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Well, melon harvest today at the Back to Eden Garden, and uh, it's quite a harvest. We've taken already quite a few cantaloupes out of here and a couple of honeydew, but uh, the watermelon, my goodness gracious, I don't know, there are probably 20 here, and there's a good 40 left in the patch over here that yet to be picked. Not all of them are ripe yet, but uh, it's quite a harvest. And this guy right here, we've already cut it open as you can see. Last year we had a watermelon that I weighed at 45 pounds. That wasn't the biggest one. I believe the biggest one was probably about 50 pounds. This guy was bigger than that. I'm thinking this was probably a 55 to 60 pound watermelon. It's enormous and it is sweet and juicy and delicious. So the watermelons, the melons seem to like the wood chip gardening. 